Lighting the flames of faith. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the now, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Anita Baroldi lights the last candle, let it represent what brought you here today. And now if you'll join me in an affirmative prayer. Right here, right this moment, I delight in going inward and refreshing my mind, reminding myself that this is the truth, that behind it all, despite outward appearances, there is in truth only one life. There's one mind, one infinite creative loving being that in its original state is absolutely formless and so permeates and penetrates and occupies every inter and inner space. And this one power, this one mind that is pure love, it's all wisdom, it's all intelligence. It is unopposed and therefore unopposable, so it is always in a state of absolute peace and it is limitless inexhaustible power it is infinite capacity for beauty and for appreciation and gratitude and supply it is expressing itself through each and every one of us as each of us individually and collectively is a divine idea in this mind extended into this realm of time and space, also created by this one, for the purpose of doing what life does, expressing maximum and more experiences and essence of itself. So that means each of us is here as spirit's vehicle for expressing more love, more joy, more harmony, more peace, more satisfaction, more delight. And so each of us is able to decide clearly to live the life of our dreams. So I claim that each person here is finding exactly what he or she is desiring in this service, whether it's in person or through other media, that each person is hearing in a new way that essence of truth that allows us to remove any final obstacles to finally absolutely accepting to live the life of our dreams. So I give thanks for this good. I claim that any healing that needs to take place in anyone, anywhere for this good to be accepted, that this healing is happening right here, right now, this moment. It's palpable. 
So I accept it, I give thanks, and I just easily turn it over to these perfect laws that act with absolute precision, knowing it is already done. And so please join me as we anchor it by saying, and so it is. And now Aiden Greeny is directing Joanne Leon to come up here and read our principles and the affirmation. Thank you. 
absolutely perfect for today and probably for every day. So this is the time of our life. Are we living it out loud, like the song says, or are we living in a whisper? The, today's message is, is living an empowered life, living an empowered life. And the notes from Centers for Spiritual Living, the person that did the note said, it just means not being a victim. So blah, 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 not being a victim, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> I, I actually did not think that is what it meant at all. Living in an empowered life means living in your nature, in the nature that you were created in. You are made in the image and likeness of the one power itself. And that one power is omnipotent, meaning all power. There is no, it is the most power. It's not a puny little power. It's not a sometimes power. It's not a, a power that, okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's all power. Living an empowered life means simply living. You, living from your real nature, from the essence that you are from the greatness, the beauty, the strength, the ideals that is God in you. And it's as easy as that. It's as easy as saying, yes, I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going to live an empowered life. And what that means is it don't, you don't give your power away to anything or anyone. You don't give your power away to the scale in the morning. You don't let the scale tell you you're beautiful or not beautiful. You don't give your power away to what's happening in the news. You don't let go of who you are because of what you're hearing or what's going on around you. And you certainly don't give your power away to a three pound cat. <laughs> so so uh, yesterday, you know, many of you know we were celebrating our we're celebrating you. We had a party at the Riley's home, which was just beautiful. And just before I was getting ready, I was getting ready to go, and um, my three-pound cat, which is the smaller one, uh, started screaming. And it was like really distressing, this scream. So immediately I look, and he had caught himself, he's caught his leg in um, the pull, the drum, blind pull, and it's stretchy. So it managed to just get more and more caught, and he was upside down with his little head on the bottom of his cat tree. He could not escape, and the more he struggled, the more afraid he became. And the more afraid he became, the more he struggled, etc., etc. So of course, I just walked over as fast as I could, I ran over, and that was a fast walk. And I grabbed him, and he really screamed. And then he bit me and scratched him. But meanwhile, I was able to get his leg out and uh, and, <laughs> and made a mess in my house because, you know, the, a cat bite is deep, and it was just spurting all over the place. I didn't take a bandage with me. I just put my arms around the cat. And I've been working very hard, as you know, as those of you who've been here the last couple of weeks, trying to tame these little guys, because they've been, uh, and they were finally getting to be okay about being in the same room as I was. They were just getting okay about that. And I was joking with Grant yesterday that I just need to teach them how to meditate. Once they know how to meditate, I can just say, ah, be still and know that I am God, and they'll just relax. And then I can just take those little legs out of it. Anyway, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And that, um, and so we're starting all over again with the process of me domesticating these beautiful beings, taming them, getting them to trust me, getting them to trust me. I thought, what an interesting <coughs> thing to occur the day the day before, I'm going to talk about living an empowered life. Because at first, when I, when I called over to Claudia's home, I was, not, I was sure I wouldn't be able to make it to the party because I was upset and I was hurt, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I said, please 
give my regrets to everybody. And, and then by the time I got back from the urgent care, I started thinking about that. That isn't right. Who am I? Who am I? Am I someone that's going to cover up my head and go to bed and say, <laughs> okay, well, until the rest of my life settles down, that isn't who I am. I am that person that rescues this pure, poor little terrified being. I'm not the terrified being, but I used to be. And I think all of us can relate to times in our life where we gave our power away. We allow fear to fill us and to cause us to be less than we really are, to make decisions that weren't empowering decisions for others because they weren't for ourselves. And um, the book we've been using for the month, the, the book that Ray Hinton, the Ray Hinton story of being on death row for 30 years, 30 years as an innocent person. And this is an interesting choice of living an empowered life for someone who was imprisoned, falsely imprisoned, and was there, kept incarcerated for 30 years. It sounds like being victimized to me. And then when you look at it more deeply and see, okay, what we teach here is everything happens, everything occurs from the inside outwards. So in other words, in other words, who we come to believe we are, that is who we are. What we come to believe we are, that is who we are. So it's an inside job first. It's an inside job first. And um, in the book, he talks about how he consciously had to change himself from being someone reactive and um, angry to someone who accepted where he was, still wanted to get out, but who was kind to others kind to himself, educated himself while, while in prison. So it's, all, it's very inspirational. Someone said to me last week, yeah, it's inspirational when you get to the last page and he gets out, but truly his story of um, overcoming the psychological difficulties that he was experiencing, I think is a really amazing story. But it's no more amazing than many of your stories. It's no more amazing than seeing people awaken to the truth and beauty and greatness that they are when they take a class, when they're in sacred service and are uh, moved to just be. I was reading a, a story this morning, a news story this morning, about a jogger in Oakland who was jogging by a lake and he just took all of this homeless man's belongings and threw them in the lake. What he didn't know was that he was being videoed. And he was, because our phones are right there. Whenever we want to know anything, they're right there. Is Jabberwocky written by Lewis Carroll or not? Right there, we found out before service. Anything that we want to know. Can you imagine, like 40 years ago, could you imagine the access to information that we have today and how we just take it for granted now. We used to think that was science fiction in those old days. We thought that it could never happen that you could have a phone in your shoe <laughs> to like get sparked in, or that you could have something that was so miniature that you could hide it and it would actually work like a phone, like your watch. It's like, I have one right on my wrist. We live in this day and age, and yet we're still often reacting instead of acting. One of the, in, in spiritual practice and in the spiritual principles, oftentimes where we start when we come to a center like this, and I know for many of you, you've been here a long, long time, so you can't remember who you were when you started. But most of us have changed a great deal from not just because we got older. And I know 
I didn't say or. Notice if because we changed who we were, who we were into who we were becoming, now we are. We changed. We changed. We're not reactive. We're not fear-based. We do speak up for ourselves. We do tell the truth. We do know our own value and worth because we're amazing beings made in the image and likeness of the thing itself. And that in itself is an amazing idea. So oftentimes when we start, we are living a life where we think we're just living a normal life, but really we're living a reactive life, meaning we're reacting. People say things, we react to them. People do things, we react to that. And there's been very little choice, very little self-direction. Maybe one or two of you were like that when you came. <laughs> but it, 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 was, it was normal. I remember in my 20s, um, I was a teacher in a junior high school. We would go over to our principal's place Friday nights, about six of us, and we would talk about saving the world. We were very idealistic. We really saw the world as needing saving because most of those other people weren't quite as with it as we were. Most of those other people were, anyway, you know the story. And it wasn't true. It's not a true story, but it was a common story. And uh, along with that story came the story of <laughs> The, the men in our lives that weren't good enough or doing the right things. And uh, anyway, another story that wasn't true. They're all, everybody is on their perfect right path. And right now, we're on that path perfectly. So back to where, when we started, oftentimes we think we're at the mercy of the world. And if you think about it, you're like a cork in the ocean. You just, whatever the currents are moving you, that's where you move. And then there's an awakening that happens. And you realize, oh, I have choices here. Now, oftentimes, this next stage is just as reactionary as the first stage. I have choices to protect myself. I have choices to uh, speak up and say no, holler, etc. But there's still not choices that are made from an awareness of the greatness of who we are. Those choices, um, those choices are the empowering ones. So living an empowered life doesn't just mean uh, knowing who you are and what you can do. It's knowing that you're bigger than you ever thought you were that you're greater than the greatest thing you've ever imagined. That's what it means. I know when I started coming to um, uh, Science of Mind Center, I did believe in God by that time. I told you my story, how I did, then I didn't, and then I did again. But I did believe in God, but I didn't get how my relationship to God would work. I thought God was separate from me, outside of myself. Many people do. And therefore, give our power away in that way. Because this outside God is going to, um, is going to decide for me. So when we study the science of mind, this philosophy, we come to find out that it is done unto us as we believe. And come to find out that we can choose to change those beliefs, that they don't have to stay whatever they were, no matter how many really good reasons we had for those, those choices being the way they are. That we could um, relax into this place of greatness that God is. The the God that says no, or not yet, isn't the God that we teach about here. I'm going to say that again, because some of you think he is. The 
God that says no or not yet, not not now, darling, isn't the God that we teach here. We teach that that creative force never interferes. Simply, simply says yes, yes, yes. And think about it. We are trusted so much that we get total choice, total freedom. What do we want to believe? What do we believe? Does it make sense? Is it logical? Maybe, maybe not. But we get to choose. And then from that choosing, we get to experience those decisions. There couldn't be anything better. Couldn't be anything better. In the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes writes, uh, he calls it a meditation, it's a prayer. And I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you, because I think this is, this is pretty powerful. And from our affirmation this morning about dipping deeply into that divine nature, this is, Bird is talking about dipping deeply into that divine nature. So, If you want to look it up in your assignment <coughs> textbook, is I allow myself, I allow myself to dip deeply into my divine nature. So I let myself dip deeply into my divine nature. And he says, this meditation is built from the idea that each one of us has within himself a deeper nature, and of course, this deeper nature being an eternal, an eternal unity with God or the living spirit, is more than man. It is where the being of man, or the nature of man, merges into the being of God. And so for those are, that are bristling because of all this he, it, it, that's how we use direct. The indefinite pronoun was always chosen to be he. So I could change it to she if that makes it easier listening. Or it. <laughs> or, or it. <laughs> So as we dip deeply into our divine nature, let us realize that entering the secret presence of this tabernacle of God, we will, like the pilgrims of old, have to shed that which does not belong to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of good. We have to deliberately drop that which would hurt. We cannot enter this gate of good with a sword in our hand. So we let go of everything and turn over to the divine, to the, to the divine depth within our own nature, wherein the spirit of God, the spirit of love, and the spirit of peace dwells with calm serenity. We withdraw into that place within us, which has never been hurt, nor has ever been sick, has always and forever lived in divine and eternal peace, the kingdom of God, which is good. And this kingdom within us, has all peace, all power, and all perfection. We drop all hate, all fear, all animosity, all resentment. We cast out our consciousness, every doubt, and every sense of uncertainty. We know that we are entering into the atmosphere of wholeness, of happiness, and completion, where there is no fear, no doubt, no uncertainty, no want, no lack. Here is wholeness, perfection, peace, power, beauty, love, supply, and light. We know that the abundance of this life is showered upon us, and that we are guided and guarded into right action, into right decision, daily, hourly, minutely. The principle of intelligence directs us, the presence of love warms us, and the peace of God covers us. And we are led into the pathway of this peace into the knowledge of this perfection. We're conscious of the indwelling God, and we're conscious that the indwelling God is filling, instantly renewing our bodies, absolutely eliminating from us whatever there is that does not belong. Yeah. 
coordinating every function, every organ, every action and reaction, the circulation, the assimilation, the elimination, making it perfect. The life principle of every part of our being is perfect and harmonious and now functions perfectly in us. The whole order of discord is changed into the natural order of harmony and wholeness and we let the divine power be exactly what it is in us. We are no longer afraid, for love casts out fear. Our faith destroys all fear. We awake from the dream of fe the dream of fear to the vision of reality, where there is no shadow of which to be afraid. We awake from the dream of lack and want and unhappiness to the knowledge of harmony, of abundance, and of peace. I allow myself to dip deeply into my divine nature, Ernest Holmes. Dipping deeply into your own divine nature, it comes through you, greater than you can even imagine, it is. I'm gonna close with something funny. So the, this is about two farmers. One farmer is always positive and the other one is always negative. So it rains, the positive farmer says, oh good, there's so much rain, it's going to be so good for our crops. The negative farmer says, oh, but it might rain too much and wash all those seeds away. It might flood the fields. Sun comes out and it's beaming down and the positive farmer says, oh, this is so good, our crops are all going to grow, their, their seeds are all germinating nicely and the negative farmer says, yes, and if it continues like this, there'll be, we'll be, we'll be baked out and the crops will be burnt. So they, they go fishing, these two guys, and one, they, one takes his, his dog with him, his hunting dog, or his hunting, they go hunting, they don't go fishing, and <laughs> they go, they go hunting for a fish. No, they go hunting for, for, for birds. Anyway, the, the first farmer gets, catches him, shoots and makes his shot and, and his dog, he directs the dog to go and get the bird. Dog gets out of the boat, walks across the water, comes back, gives the, the bird to the farmer. And the farmer says, see, isn't that amazing? What a wonderful dog. And the, the negative farmer says, yeah, your dog doesn't swim. <laughs> your dog doesn't swim. Sometimes that's what we do. Sometimes that's what we do. We look at the thing and find a reason that we can complain about it, make it wrong, make it bad. The dog can't swim. The dog can swim. He can walk on water. He can do anything. <laughs> Just like you. You can do anything. And so it is. Okay, now I'm going to put my whole being into this prayer. In this holy moment of right now, I recognize and know that there is only one power, one presence, one life. And that presence that is God is all-knowing everywhere. That it is the Alpha and the Omega, that without beginning and without end. It is omnipotent. It is omniscient. Omnipresence. This thing itself that is everywhere, that knows all, that is all power is right where I am, right where each one of us is. And so from an awareness, a greater awareness than ever before that this thing that I am is moving through me as life, I speak my word and I consciously speak this word knowing that it is creative because that is the creative process. I speak this word for perfect health, wholeness, a, a, a being alive, awake, and aware in every moment that there is perfect assimilation, perfect circulation, perfect flow of that divinity within. 
I speak this word for prosperity, for all good, and for the circulation of that all good in every aspect of my life. I accept a greater flow of divine substance and supply. I accept a greater good in every aspect of self. It is easy for me to, to accept greater good. It is easy for me to be that greatness that God is as me. It is easy for me to accept the love that I am that is ever flowing, ever increasing, that is that which harmonizes and magnetizes every good thing to me and to mine, to this community, and to all beings everywhere. Love is. I speak this word for creativity, that the creative power of the divine is right here in this very room, in and through and as me in and through it as each one of us. And I know, or I'm declaring it, that new, greater, more powerful ideas are coming to me now. I have demanded from the universe a new idea, a bigger idea, a fuller idea of life and of myself and of this livingness. I release all ideas of fear and lack and any kind of discord, I release any belief that I need to protect myself and have a hidden weapon or even a visible one. I release anything that would say that I am not the power of God. I am the power of God. And with that, with that joyful release, I simply let go and let God. This word is power. I accept it as being so. And so it is. So there it is. <laughs> and now, Wade Woolrich.
time for us to share our gifts, our tithes, and offerings. If the stewards would please come forward. And how we do this is uh, how we do this is we take a moment, and read our prosperity affirmation together. Take a few seconds in gratitude just to give thanks for all of the good that we received, all the good that we're sharing, and to feel that blessing. And um, then we'll sing our Blessed Always, and then Diane and, and Diane and Lee will um, follow that up. <sighs> Please join me. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
acknowledge those of you who are in service today or have been in service this week. I know that's a lot of you, so please stand so we can give you a lot of love. And then if the practitioners remain standing, the practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. And if you want your life transformed, stop by and, well, make an appointment and get a real full uh, session with them to see what that's like on a Sunday. Stop by the tables today, who we have in service today, Kathy Story, Joanne Leone, and Anita Baroldi. <laughs> if, if you're visiting us for the very first time, we have a gift for you, and all you need to do to claim it is raise your hand or raise your body, stand up, and let us know who you are. I don't see anyone that's acknowledging that. We let everyone choose. We don't course. So let's acknowledge each other. So please repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening here today. It's this thing called you. You are amazing. You are pure joy. You are pure truth. And so it is. There you go. <laughs> Look at this. Look at what, Harlan? It's right there. What the heck is it? Sheep fire? I, I don't know. No, no, really. What the heck is it? Uh, did you hear any commotion in the night? No, I just heard you snoring. Well, I didn't cause that. Huh. Well, remember when we went to that CSL thing and and they had a conscious connections after it. It, it kind of looks like that. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's the wrong color. Uh, yeah, yeah, it can't, it can't be that. But what the heck is it? You think we should call Sheriff Bruce to come on over and take a look at it? No, you know Sheriff Bruce is on his way to do that Wednesday wisdom thing. He'd never get here in time. <laughs> yeah, but, but he's talking on uh, everything you need and and I need to know what the heck that is. <laughs> well, why don't you run next door and ask Heather, the school marm, to look that up in one of her books or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's starting that quick start class on the next two Sundays. Maybe this has something to do with that. No, I don't think so. That's a spiritual class, and that thing is definitely physical. <laughs> Maybe it's a metaphysical thing. Oh. We could ask Dr. Julene about it. He's just started that class on Thursdays about metaphysical interpretations of the Bible. And it's still going on. Bible schmeibel, that thing was left there by an alien. I think you are just hallucinating. You probably had too much pizza and beer last night causing you to have bad dreams. Oh, that reminds me. Did you pick up the fixings for making something for the potluck next week? <laughs> yeah. First week of August, right after service, I, I got it handled. And I am not hallucinating, it's right there. But what the heck is it? Well, I don't know. But it must be emitting some kind of rays because the flowers are gone. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, maybe it's one of them newfangled things that only the kids know about. Oh, could be. Let's ask them. Here they come now. Thank <laughs> you.